2023 tax brackets are out. <laughs> fun stuff, fun stuff. All right, Tax Foundation. Uh, let's take a look. Now, big fan. Whoa, okay there, Butterscott. Wow, okay. Man, who runs the, who wears the pants in this house? It ain't you or me, says CCR. Don't look now. It ain't you or me. All right, uh, let's see. The IRS used uh, CPI as a measure of inflation prior to 2018. However, the TCJA, Tax Cut and Jobs Act, they now use a chain consumer price index to adjust income thresholds. All right. The new inflation adjustments are for tax year 2023, which taxpayers will file next year. So this, this is not for 2022, but for next year. Uh, the one thing that was pretty interesting right here is uh, I want to show you the standard deduction. Let's go down here. Yeah, so the standard deduction increased by 1800 bucks, dudes. 1800 schmack it. So now if you're married filing jointly, it's 2770 That's pretty good. Uh, again, we have no personal exemption because that has gone away. But that will come back at the uh, end of 2026 when the TCJA as sunset. But anyway, so if you're single, the standard deduction is pretty close to 14,000, 13,850. Married filing jointly, your standard deduction is 27,700. What is the, uh, I forgot for older people, it's like 1,300 bucks. Let me see. Yeah, I can't remember the standard deduction. Let me, let me look here real quick. So if you're over 65 and you're married, each of you guys can claim 1,500 bucks. Uh, so an extra $3,000 if you're age 65 and married. If you're single, it looks like you get an extra 1850. All right, so if your standard deduction is, uh, uh, we get 3000 bucks for a married over, so let's go back here. So our standard deduction for married would be 30,700, it looks like to me. And if you're single at 1850, it'd be uh, 1850 that. So 1850 plus 13,850. It'll be uh, 15700 All right, sweet. So there you go. So basically, for simplicity, we're going to say 15000 for single, 30000 for married. All right, that's good. I like it. All right, so let's go up here now. So that means uh, to be in the 12% tax bracket, we have to have, if we're married, just to start with, don't get all, uh, we have to have income, gross income, adjusted gross income, 89450 plus $30,000. As long as our income is about 120,000, as long as our AGI is less than 120, we'll still be in the 12% tax bracket. If we're single, as long as our income is, this is taxable income right here. So I'm talking, I'm adding the standard deduction. Uh, that's going to be about 60,000. All right, there you go. So 120 roughly for if you're married filing jointly, that's your AGI to stay in the 12% tax bracket, 60,000. If you're single, to stay in the 12% tax bracket. All right, that's huge. All right, so remember, we got 120 and 60 to work with. All right, so we come down here for capital gains, and AMT has gone up, uh, the exemption, that's all good. Um, you can see married finally jointly. You won't get hit with AMT until you make 100 and uh, 1.15 million. Okay, baby case over there is, I'm not worried about the EITC for those of you on, my, on this channel, but check this out. And here is a star of the show, Whiny McGee. All right, capital gain tax brackets. All right, right here. So married filing jointly. Remember, it's 89000 See, that's taxable income. Don't confuse that with AGI. You always start with the, I don't know why they put taxable income, and I kind of do. But still, I mean, for you, for your purposes, remember, if I have 120000 of AGI, I'm still in the 12% tax bracket, which means I have no capital gain tax, if that makes sense. Long-term capital gains. Now, can long-term capital gains ultimately put you over? Absolutely. Just FYI. You have to figure that out yourself. But yes, you can have long-term gains that put you into the next tax bracket, which means you would violate the 12% tax bracket and have no, and have taxable capital gains. I, I get that. I'm just giving you an example. If you have income of $100,000 and you have 15,000 long-term capital gain, your AGI is 100,000, you got 15,000 long-term capital gain, you have no tax on that 15,000 bucks, none. That's a huge benefit. Same with qualified dividends too. All right, so, and so here with the uh, with a single person, the point being is if you've got capital gains and you're in the 12%, I need to do more videos on this, man. I haven't done a video on taxes for a while on that stuff. If you've got capital gains and you're in the 12% tax bracket, why would you not sell? Take some gains off the table, man. You know what I'm saying? And lock them in. 
you know, qualified dividends, you know, I don't do that because they just keep paying. But man, if I'm sitting there and I'm at like 80,000 of, of AGI, and I could take a freaking $30,000 long-term capital gain and lock that puppy in. Why not do that? Yeah, so I think about it. Anyways, that's good. So let's keep going here. Uh, annual exclusion went to 17000 right here. So now you can give 17000 uh, per Social Security. So I can give 17000 to Pablo, 17000 to Finney, 17000 to anybody. And it won't be subject to any uh, gift tax. And I won't have to fill a 10, uh, 7, 790 form, IRS 790 form. I won't have to fill that out. If you go beyond the 17000 it still won't be subject to gift tax because you have a, uh, a, a lifetime exemption of a crap load of money, which we'll get to here in just a second. But um, you would have to file 709. All right, so that's good. All right, let's see. Do they say in a state? I mean, again, a state, so I'm not all that worried about here. Um, let's see. Job tax credit. All right, that's good. Like it, like it. Ooh, I thought I saw the estate tax in here. Yeah, you see. AMT, 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 standard deduction. Maybe I did. Federal income tax. All right, maybe I did. You can look it up. But anyway, long story short, I, well, let's just, let me just double check. So, uh, the lifetime gift tax exemption is $12 million. I might be married. Uh, let's see. So I don't. No, there it goes not. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yep. That means if you're married and you and your spouse could give away $24 million, I, I, and it would be not subject to gift tax. And I recommend you do that, actually, uh, to me. Give it to me. $12 million. bucks. All right. So you're not paying any gift tax. Can we just make that assumption? You're not paying gift tax. You have to file a 709. No big deal. Um, on your tax form, it's, just, it's not that big of a deal. If you give over 17000 to one single Social Security number. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um but then the exemption will drop to six million by 2026. Oh no! Anyway, so we'll see how that goes. So the estate tax, uh, lifetime gift tax. Yeah, um, I'm not going to get into that. There you go, man. New tax brackets. I love it. Start planning, plan, plan, plan. You know how can you reduce the tax burden? Because don't forget, by the way, if you're not 65 and you're going to retire early, and you can lock in some gains tax free, so that way when you go on Obamacare, you don't have to show all that income. Because you already locked in your gains at 12%. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.